Welcome. Today is Friday. It's September the 12th, and um, we are celebrating, but not from a point of view of Scripture, uh, the most holy name of Mary. And um, so today we'll just be using the readings from Friday, and we'll be looking today at the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 9 verses 16 to 19, and then moving over to verse 22 to 27. And Paul tells his Corinthian converts that they must make sacrifices and be uh, disciplined for their religion. Now Paul tells of the sacrifice of his own life in preaching the gospel. And probably that's the best sacrifice because people will understand um, it's yours, and it's what you've done in order to proclaim the gospel. So um, we hear this in, in, in Paul's life as he speaks to the Corinthian community. Uh, but before we begin, let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, may we place you at the center of our hearts. May we keep you as a firm foundation in all our decisions, actions, and also words. With your strong foundation to hold us, may we grow in confidence and compassion. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> so now our letter to the Paul, <coughs> to Paul, from Paul to the Corinthians. Preaching the gospel is not the subject of a boast. I am under compulsion and have no choice. I am ruined if I do not preach it, if I do not do it willingly. If I do it willingly, I have my recompense. If unwillingly, I am nonetheless entrusted with a charge. And this recompense of mine, it is simple. This, that when preaching, I offer the gospel free of charge and do not take full use of the authority the gospel gives me. Although I am not bound to anyone, I made myself the slave of all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became a weak person with a view to winning the weak. I have made myself all things to all men in order to save at least some of them. In fact, I do all that I do for the sake of the gospel in the hope of having a share in its blessings. You know that while all the runners in the stadium take part in the race, the award goes to one man. In that case, run so as to win. Athletes deny themselves all sorts of things. They do this to win a crown of leaves that withers, but we, a crown that is imperishable. I do not run like a man who loses sight of the finish line. I do not fight as if I were shadow boxing. What I do is discipline my own body and master it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself should be rejected. So what we find here is that after Paul dealing with several conflicts that plagued the Corinthian community, Paul is charged with inconsistency. So he is accused of trying to be all things to all people. And he admits that uh, charge and turns it into a virtue. In one of his own various self-defenses, he insists that he simply keeps his eyes on the goal of uh, persevering uh, in Christ Jesus and preserving the unity and bringing God, uh, the people, let's say, to God, to Christ. Let theologians worry about theological consistency and he has the church um, to run, says Paul. Paul's passionate concern is to celebrate out um, the virtual issues from the second, um, secondary one. It is the critical point that this fledging Christian community, not bogged down in a great many little disputes and lose their fundamental unity and a sense of purpose. Paul insists that he keeps his eyes on the big picture. Somebody has to do that. And so when we, when we listen to Paul in this particular passage, 
we have to realize that um, he is trying to share with the people, yes, all of us are important, but there is a bigger picture. It's the universal view of the scripture and what Jesus came to do. Not do for one, but to do for all. So it's keeping our eyes on Christ Jesus and our ears um, attuned to his words as he speaks um, to mankind and as he speaks to us also through the scriptures. Um, it's important to note then um, that Paul is charged with inconsistency um, and yet being charged with that, he works very hard um, to bring about uh, theological consistency. So um, he has to kind of um, move between um, uh, the groups in order to bring them to Christ. And sometimes it's emphasizing something a little more on this side versus something a little more on this side. But he's trying to, to bring about the whole reality of consistency in the way that he's sharing the gospel message. And that sometimes can be very, very hard to do in the company that you keep, um, especially in this particular company, because the Corinthians were really tough people. <laughs> they were tough. They were tough, like, is worldly wise tough or just very critical of everything? Well, they were yeah. both, worldly yeah. wise mm -hmm. and very critical. And um, for them, they, they had to see um, that, um, and, and they wanted and they needed someone in their life who was going to be constant, never changing, always being. But you know, that's like a statue. And we, we are not statues in Christianity. We are the believing, faithful community. And so things begin to sometimes more and more come together. They're kind of rubbed together. Um, and yet uh, we have to realize that that rubbing together of two ideas brings about then the joining of those two ideas in some way or another. And so Paul was good at trying to theologize what was happening in the community. But also he would stand back at times and say, this is definitely wrong. We, sh we cannot be going this way. So Paul, for the most part, was the living conscience of the community as it really strived to um, build up the faith and to grow in the likeness of Christ. And Paul was building a foundation. Right. You know, the, the foundation, the, the basic tenets on which our faith is, is anchored and rooted, that doesn't change. And no. there's, it's simple. There are simple right. precepts. Um, everything else is, I don't want to say, it's, just, it's um, additional. And I don't like to call it fluff, but it, it's, it's just uh, addressing. But the basic tenets never change. And perhaps this was part of what Paul, you know, Paul was trying Try to, to get same. across to them. Mm -hmm. and, and they were seeing all the grays and all the pitfalls and, and uh, their consistency wasn't probably what Paul was trying to tell them. I think to, to what we begin to see is the importance of always being constant in what you say in regards to the teachings of the church. Yeah. Uh, but once you, you stop and you hear what somebody says and you then make some type of a judgment towards um, what they were saying versus the overall reality, um, then you really lose your ability to teach because to teach is to teach the truth and the truth is always going to be the same. So that's what we need to always look at in relationship to ourselves. Bye-bye.